All right, so here we are editing Tapped Into The Source podcast. And what we want to start off with is looking at the timeline. If you want to maybe come over here, maybe see it. Yeah, this is the screen. I could change screens too if you if you need, but this is, I think, the most visual for you. Um, and we have on channel one, Kyle, channel two, Tyler. Um, we have the SMB7 microphone here and then just a 58 microphone for this one. And then I put the guitar channel direct in down here. It's, and I put it on a separate channel entirely so that we can put specific effects in. So just to do the, the quick and easy, I have um, a preset that I've created for these situations and it's called JA Vokes. And it's a vocal preset. And as you can see, I have my compressor, I have my EQ, I have my chorus, limiter, and utility. Utility is like a gain structure. So I can bring that up and down. And this is a rack that I just created um, inside here. And this is what we're hoping that Hindenburg can do, is multiple effects, effect chains like this. And what we then do is solo. I'm going to take off all record enables. We're going to solo your voice and just loop it. I'm going to zoom in plus. I'm going to just loop this one section here. Command L to loop. Another feature hopefully we have on the other program. And we're just going to listen back. Music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California. We're going to open up our EQ, make it larger. And now work on what frequencies your specific voice is. And this is the cool thing is that we're learning your voice pretty much like your, your talking voice. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California. A lot of low end. For a saloon. It's a legendary landmark, which has attracted amazing artists from all over the country. So that right there, there's a little bit of a, a sound that doesn't really sound good. So I'm bringing it up to then bring it down. Now, what I also like to do is I, I like to have my numbers line up as well. So I'm going to bring my three there and let's do it with our two. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse Saloon. So that's almost like a low feedback. Did, did you hear that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Another important thing is I have these Rocket Fives. They're not the best speakers, but it's good enough to do mixing. If you're mixing with poor speakers, like through your, just, just those right there, it's not enough. Even if you have headphones, it's a decent source, but to have some monitors is going to allow you to hear these frequencies better. Okay. So, um, that's one of the points of this is kind of what gear is necessary. I think the headphones would be, you know, a way around that because it's smaller, but it's, yeah, we'll see. So I'm bringing that down by about six dB, just dropping that out. Let's see how that sounds. I've been the music director of a small venue. And it just cleaned it up a little bit, California. right? So now I go to my next band EQ. I'm going to go through and just turn on all of these EQs these extra eight that I have here and put these in order. I should already have these in order, but it just kind of helps in the organization. Now I'm going to find the next one. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse Saloon. It's a legendary landmark, which has attracted amazing artists from all over the country. So this is one that like, it's pretty wide. Like this, this whole area kind of has a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's not feedback, but it's kind of like you, you can hear. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse. Saloon. A little bit. You hear that? Nasally. Yeah. So um, and it's going to get more and more nasally as we get to the higher frequencies, too. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just kind of it's not going to be a, a hard. I'll, I'll keep it at like a, a one. So that my cue points, not it's wider, and then I'm going to drop this to negative two. So it's very subtle. Okay, these subtle changes. I've been the music director of a small can venue make in Nevada City, California, sound pretty good. called the Crazy Horse Saloon. It's a legendary landmark which has attracted amazing artists. Now, I think I like to have these peak EQs set for each one. Um, 
I'm guessing the trial version of of Hindenburg will have an EQ in there, but it won't have like an eight band like this. It might have like a three band. So the trial versions have lesser, but um, we might only do three, honestly. It doesn't need too much, I don't think. And nice microphones, there's less post-production. The SMB7 is pretty good. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse Saloon. It's a legendary landmark, which has attracted amazing artists from all over the country. One of the brightest stars there. In two Let me just make sure all of these are kind of at the six mark. The Q points being at six is kind of allows it to be like a, a triangle lift instead of like a larger lift. Does that make sense to you? They're kind of they're more triangle. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse Saloon. It's a legendary landmark which has attracted amazing artists from all over the country. One of the brightest stars there in 2019 and early 2020 was Kyle Letson. Kyle is a local phenom who plays mandolin and guitar like they are natural appendages on his body. All right. So I also have this, this drop out of the low end. This is like for subwoofers. And you do have a low voice, and I want to accent that a little bit, but it's more around this, like, this area right here. The four, you can see, is at 341 hertz. Okay, I'm just putting that up just a tad bit, just by a few dB. And all this low end, which is, like, engaging the subs, and it's kind of that muffly sound that could be almost over overwhelming sometimes for speakers. I'm just bringing that out entirely. And a great way to do this is to A-B it. I've been the music right? director can... of... A small venue in Nevada City, California, called the Crazy Horse Saloon. On and off with it's the low. It's a legendary landmark, which has attracted amazing artists. What's cool about this is that I'm not hearing too much of a difference, and that's probably because these speakers don't pick up the low end. Like, if I had a subwoofer, we would hear a larger difference. Um, but I think that just bringing this... Just so we don't want to disturb your low end. We want it to be kind of full and bring the body, which is that low end of your voice... So, okay, it looks like our eight is too high way up here. I'm just gonna bring out a little bit of the highs. What's this at? Yeah, so our ears can barely hear, you know, over 18 to 20K hertz. So I'm just gonna kind of roll that off. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California. Okay, so we have the EQ there. The compressor needs to engage. As you can see, your, your talking voice isn't coming up venue in Nevada City, to this marker. Called the Crazy Horse so I'm just going to drop this. It's a legendary landmark, which has attracted amazing artists. Notice how it just got higher in volume. Mm -hmm. okay? And that's because we're kind of like being able to um, engage it. When your voice comes through, it's going to kind of like limit compress and push it up. There's, there's actually a different way of looking at these. Right here. I've been the music director. You can kind of, of see what it does. A small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse Saloon. It's making your voice kind of all the same volume. So if you ever kind of get too quiet, it's going to kind of like put you in this kind of nominal zone where it's going to sound good, which is what we're going for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And you're, and you're setting all this so that this is going to be our template for. I can save this template in Ableton, and this will be a setting. Um, I'm also going to save every preset as well. So right away, we're actually almost done with your voice, and when we're done with your voice, I'm going to save this whole rack as um, the, let's say, Tapped Into the Source podcast, Tyler's Voice, SMB7. So knowing you as a source of the voice and the microphone picking you up, and every time that that's matched up, I just throw this in. We don't ever have to do this again. And that's part of the preset that I want you to have with Hindenburg too. Because like, that's that 10 minutes every time. You just go plunk, done. Um, okay, so it's sounding pretty good. I'm going to take off the chorus entirely. I don't think you need a chorus at all. That's more for like singers. And a limiter. The ceiling at negative three, I think that's closer to like negative 0.5 i don't really want that to engage if we want, want more volume there's a couple different ways to do it i did I, I do see that you came in kind of um like not at a peak volume or at a high volume because the smb7 has a um 
it needs like a cloud lifter on it to, to pop up the volume, similar to what this compressor kind of did. And, but what we can do in post-production to do that is to lift the gain. And this is something that I'm curious about Hindenburg is can you take a gain and just increase it? So I'm going up and notice how the whole waveform is getting larger. Yeah. Right? So we don't want it to peak on the sides. When it gets to the sides, that's where it's going to crunch the speaker. We want it to be just a decent volume. Now, by doing this, though, it's going to change the whole structure of our compression as well. It's going to be engaging the threshold higher. So let's try this out. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California called the Crazy Horse Saloon. It's a legendary landmark which has attracted amazing artists from all over the country. Yeah, sounds really good. Um, we're going to actually bring our master, just make it a little bit bigger here. Because um, we want to see what it's doing over here. So on the very side, this is our master um, volume level being shown. And if it's too low or too high, we want to do things about that as well. Um, I also have a master effects chain on this that doesn't need to be here. Effects. The limiter's OK. I'm also going to drop on a mastering effect that I will do at the very end. This is a preset, so this is something that I've taken some time on. And this is just kind of, it's a master gain, uh, gain structure for the low, mids, and highs to an EQ. It has a limiter, compressor, all built into it. So everything that we went over with the voice, but for the entire mix. And it's just going to boost it up once more. And I'm going to listen to it now with it on, just because I want to make sure I'm going in the right direction with all this. I've been the music director of a small venue in Nevada City, California, called the Crazy Horse Saloon. All right. Sounds pretty good. Now, um, this is decent. We can always say this again, but I'm going to go ahead and save this. And this saving is pretty important here. This goes to my user library. And I'm going to bring this in as Tyler. Do you ever, like, abbreviate tapped in the source as T-I... T-I-T-S. Yeah, T-I-T-S. Yeah. Okay. T-I-T-S. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It yeah. is real. <laughs> Tapped into the source. T-I-T-S. <laughs> right. Is that good or not? I, don't know. I think it's amazing. <laughs> so, Tyler. <laughs> T-I-T-S. Okay. And I'm going to go 01, my first version of this. And this is going to be uh, S. MB701, because I'm saying the microphone. Great. So we have that. And I want to make sure that I can get to that really easily. Um, so I could put that into my favorites. But because we're not always working in this together, I'm just going to leave it where it's at. And I can now take this and drop it into a new audio track, such as Kyle's. And I'm starting with your voice. Right, but his voice is going to be a little bit different, obviously. Different microphone, different person. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on his side. I'm going to go to a spot that he's talking pretty constantly through. Oh, here's another thing, too, is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate his and, only, and have his singing later on, his singing voice, be on a separate channel and name that vocal. Uh, singing Kyle because his singing voice as you can see the waveform here is way bigger than his talking voice so I'm going to completely EQ that differently so we have four different EQs guitar two of his voice and then yours how did you create the, the extra channel um, it's a shortcut code command D in Ableton mm -hmm. and this is where my workflow is really fast here and that's what we want to find out is like how do you do that in Hindenburg really fast with your shortcuts the, the long way is like create and then insert track up here, mm -hmm. you know, and then you copy and paste or duplicate, etc. All right, so we're going to go to his voice and do the exact same thing. I'll, I'll do it in a, um, probably a better order this time. 
probably wouldn't expect uh, a long time ago to be playing like fiddle tunes using a guitar. As I'm gonna go ahead and piece because it was increase like his volume right away. Aspect of the music, and so yeah, it's it's I, I a lot of the skills that I learned on the mandolin transferred directly straight over to the guitar, and so it, yeah, it's super unique. Be yeah, it, I mean I mean playing with a pick allows you to uh, get a lot of. All right, so you hear that P sound playing with a pick? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna actually highlight that. Because and it's also his highest voice. I don't want to make sure that that doesn't um, peak at all. So I'm going to loop that, and we're going to go into the EQ and find out what frequency that might be for his voice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with a pick a lot. It's way down here in the low end, so I can try and bring that down. Let's go ahead and open that up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with a pick allows you to uh, get. Yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with a pick allows you to uh, get. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start flat because this is gonna be different than your voice. Let's find out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with a pick allows you to uh, get. So the same. It's interesting. 170 hertz is kind of a, a trouble spot for him, similar to you. And then, yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with a pick allows you to uh, get. Yeah, I mean, I mean, playing with a pick allows you to uh, get. Yeah, I mean. All right, cool. So let's go to another spot that's a little softer. Um, they invited me to this festival called Camp Deep End, which is, and that was the first year they did it, and that's one of my favorite festivals. Um, ALO and Hubbard Rum co-headline and that was probably the first time I seriously sat in with a band and and you know I didn't even have like a all the right equipment they had to go rush and get it um I, I was even new to having like a pickup inside of my mandolin and that was probably one of the first that was the first band that I ever like sat in with and then after that I, I we started reaching out to people and and all right so once again we found another spot of that sound right it's like a, a pitch or frequency and that's kind of like somewhat of a feedback i did it and that's one of my favorite festivals um alo and hubbard rum co-headline and that was probably the that one as well i don't want to go too much on these and I'm, i'll even make the cue even sharper on this because i don't i still want low end on his voice but i don't um, I don't want those sounds to be there. Feedback sounds. I did it, and that's one of my favorite festivals. Um, ALO and Hubbard Rum co-headline, and that was probably the first time I seriously sat in with a band, and and you know I didn't even have like a all the right equipment. They had to go rush and get it. Um, I, I was even new to having like a pickup inside of my mandolin, and that was probably one of the first. That was the first band that I had ever like sat in with. And then after that, I, I we started reaching out to people, and and then what you've the opportunities you've given me through Crazy Horse. All. Nice. Sounds good. Yeah. So I noticed that the S the SM uh, SM58, which is what he used, um, the Sure Mic, it just um, there's a lot of more kind of trouble frequencies. Like I could have used like a 32 band EQ possibly, mm -hmm. but overall it's like good enough, I would say, and. Because I saved your setting over here, it comes in with the chorus already off and all my work was saved. So it saved me a bunch of time. I do want to make sure that my compressor is engaging at the right After time. After that, I, I, we started reaching out to people and, and then what you've, the opportunities you've given me through Crazy Horse also were some of the earlier sit-ins. Mm -hmm. Yep, just outside there. Cool. And so I brought up the limiter. Um, so the gain, it's, it's kind of another way to push the gain. But the reason why I'm using the limiter over here is that it also has a ceiling so it won't peak. So it's kind of like a fail proof way of pushing the volume without peaking the volume. It's squashing it down. Another way to kind of squash it, bring it as close as possible to nominal without peaking. All right. So... Let's go ahead and listen to all of that now. I'll take the EQ down. And, and, and then the collaborative nature of it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's something I'm always still learning because it's just such a 
huge amount of information. Like I wasn't, I guess, classically trained in the bluegrass arts, as as they usually say. Like I'm not a traditional guy, and so, like the one festival that was very traditional was uh, um, Father's Day out here in in Grass Valley. Did you get the audio tracks from him, the waves? Um, I had them already. You did. Yeah. Rad. What's it, you want to put it on a um, maybe through Google Drive? You can upload them to Google Drive and share it with me, and I'll bring them into the session. Well, I'm oh, put this right here. perfect. All right, so we're gonna add kind of intro, outro, kind of music. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, right? All right, plug in this bad boy in. Is there a certain song you want? <clears throat> um, there, there was one 30 second um, segment I picked out. Um, I think I think it's good for um, segging into to him like out of my intro and into uh -huh. him but as far as like the actual um, initial lead into the show I would I would probably pick something else okay cool so I have the file on this okay. USB drive and it's, um, it's I'll just go ahead and bring this over is are, are you cool with that yeah We'll just have all of them in our folder. Cool. So I'm making sure that this is in the master folder of Tapped Into the Source. Um, and the reason why is that I don't want to drag it directly from your USB because once I unplug your USB, the file's missing. Like mm -hmm. it's trying to grab from the USB. I want to grab it from a spot where I know it's going to always be. So. But that backend organization is really helpful um, in all DAWs, for sure. And also, um, just another thing that is going to save us time in the future is taking all of these songs and collecting them all, selecting them, and then grouping them by right-clicking and new folder with selections. So now we have the entire So Kyle Let's an Album. And I'll put all. Okay. So, um, do you have a suggestion yeah. on which song? Yeah. Uh, no footprints. No footprints. And it was um, from two two fifty six to about three twenty six. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, um, you can create a whole new audio track, or you can just drag it into the appropriate area. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it for now. And it creates an audio track for me. And this is going to be in the background of you talking, right? Um, in the beginning, intro. Well, um, no, no, it'll be... Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. It, it'll, it'll, not in the background, it'll kind of be just a, a solo intro. Solo intro, so it'll play for... It'll play for 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and then I'll start talking. Perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm going to insert time, command I, and I can say how many bars. And right now, because it's a whole song, I'll just say like 64 bars. I had th that time signature go. isolated. Does that mean anything? Absolutely. Okay. So the, the, say it again, the two... 256 to 326, I believe it was. Okay, I want to make sure that this is not in warp mode and it is not being warped. 256 is, I'll zoom in. So the time, the timer's right down here on mine and, and I'll cut that, command E. And I'm just going to take that out and then bring that over. And then the other part. 326, I believe. Okay, I'll, let me move that back again. So, 326? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So before I move it, I want to just get that second time you said. So 326. I'll give a little more time for the fade out. And so no music behind you, rough, roughly? No, no. Okay. 
Okay, great. So then we'll have a fade out into you talking. And this fader is kind of an easy new feature of the past few versions of Ableton without having to do any automation fader. And this extra time I have now, I can delete it. The extra bars. All right, I did quite a bit of extra bars, honestly. Just go Command Shift Delete, brings that over, and we have our intro now. Now, this music should already be at nominal. It doesn't look like it was really mastered. You can see it's not totally out, so we might want to put some mastering on it, but we'll find out. That's oh, great. Of course, Oz Fritz mastered it. <laughs> Sounds like Ezra Lip on drums. I can hear it. At this juncture in time and space, you can consider good? yourself tapped into the source. I'm Tyler Blue. Come. Often what people do in podcasts is they, they have this extend out like this for a while and just drop the volume, put a, put a volume change here, have a little bit of the sound going in the background. You want to try that? Sure. Okay. So this is where I would bring in a utility. I have it my favorite saved, just a basic utility. And I'm going to right click on the gain structure and show automation. Now, this is where, right when Tyler's voice comes in, zooming in, I'm going to have that fade out. Not entirely, but enough. I'm doing a pretty big drop by about 14 dB. At this juncture in time and space, you can consider yourself tapped into the source. I'm Tyler Blue, coming to you from Grass Valley, California. Thanks for checking out my podcast, like it? and thanks in advance for sharing it with friends and family. Another podcast may not be what the world needs, but it's a burning desire for me, which I can no longer ignore. What does it mean to be tapped into the source? It's that feeling many of us strive for to experience where you completely surrender yourself to the power of a moment and the rest of the world melts away. Something that I might suggest is because he starts singing right when you start talking is just loop the, the instrumental okay. again or something. Yeah, I prefer that. Okay. Or, or yeah. Or, or we could start it a little further back. Further back? Okay. I can do that. And just have it go for 10 seconds into my talking. That's a cool intro. Mm -hmm. Right on that yeah. bang. Okay. See how that goes. Ah, I liked it better before, huh? Mm. Or maybe like this. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Sweet. I like the panning is going on. Copying and pasting that. At this juncture in time and space. I'm going to bring that a little sooner. So I'm just copying and pasting that automation sooner and bringing that over. At this juncture in time and space, you can consider yourself tapped into the source. I'm Tyler Blue, coming to you from Grass Valley, California. Thanks for checking out my podcast, and thanks in advance for sharing it with friends and family. Another podcast may not be what the world needs. So if that isn't right exactly where I want it, I could right-click on it and edit value. 
great feature. 14.5 negative. Okay. I think I was able to bring up the volume behind you because he wasn't singing. So that's kind of cool. And, and we'll, we'll fade it out completely before he, the singing begins, I think. Yeah, let's yeah. find out. So that is a... Really surrender yourself to the power. For me, it's often music related. And the rest of the world, really surrender yourself to the power of a moment. And the re It's that feeling many of us strive for to experience where you completely surrender yourself to the power of a moment and the rest of the world. That's where it is right there, right? to experience where you completely surrender yourself to the power of a moment and the rest of the world melts away. For me, it's often music related. It's that feeling many of us strive for to experience where you completely surrender yourself to the power of a moment and the rest of the world melts away. For me, it's often music melts away and then it yeah. melts away. Exactly. Crazy how that works out. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sometimes a gate is kind of nice because, as you can see here, when he's talking, music festivals and it's coming through your microphone. Around two or three so let's just add a gate in here, too. I'm going to type in gate into audio effects in the upper right hand corner. Um, dynamics, gate. All right, maybe there's a preset for a softy. Okay. Let's see how soft gate looks. I'm going to loop just this one section has your voice and then his. The reason why I need both is that I want it to engage and let you through, but I don't want anything else lower to become come through. Okay. For you being moved by the power of music. For you being moved by the power of music. Threshold. For you being moved by the power of music. Wow. Constantly evolving every time he plays. He released his debut album, Crooked Mandolin, at the age of 13. His sophomore album, Left It All Behind, came out in January when he was still 18. In my thoroughly biased opinion, it's one of the hottest bluegrass Americana releases of the modern era. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Nice. So now that that is there, I can copy and paste that. I normally don't put this gate behind um, vocalists, singers too often, unless there's like it's, it's at a live show maybe and you want that isolation. There's like a drum coming through behind or something. But for podcast, same thing with his channel. So see how it kind of like accidentally got a moment there. I want to So that's a moment where he I want my threshold to be a little higher so that doesn't happen that that young age and it, it made a huge impact on me and I was dying to want to learn an instrument cuz I was just surrounded by it See how quiet it is in between? There's a little bit still there. That's a moment when you t you spoke. So I'm changing my threshold so that you don't come through. Cool. So now you're not coming through, but I want to make sure. Yeah. Every time he he talks, it it opens up, right? Yeah, I started fiddle um, up until I was around six years old. I was doing like a, I was learning from the Suzuki books and classical and a little bit of uh, bluegrass stuff too. I am noticing that when he gets quieter on the mic, though, it's kind of starting to mess with his voice a tad bit. So what I'm going to do is bring it back to where it was, and this is a moment where it's kind of uh, tedious, but I might actually cut out sections like this, which is where you were talking, right? This is another way to manually gate it. It's like, we don't want his voice coming through when you're talking and vice versa. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I don't need to do this all the way through, but like I did see right here, there was, there was bleed between the two of you guys. So this is part of your setup. It's like, how close are you guys? 
because we had that green screen there, maybe you guys were a little bit closer, so there's a little bit more bleed for that matter. That might be something that happened. Um, but for that, we have it now clean. That that I remember that even at that young age, and it, it made a huge impact on me. And I was dying to want to learn an instrument because I was just surrounded by it. And how's it working for you to do that, like experiment with that? Um, while keeping the um, original file, not like it's it's. Are you saving both of those things simultaneously? The original file is sitting somewhere, untouched. Okay. Yeah, this is. This is the full on edit. edit. This is an edit mode. Yeah, and I actually saved a new f version too, Tyler Mix O One up here. Uh -huh. So I have the original, because I actually want to edit this differently myself. I actually want to match the video to it. So all these cuts of time, I can't do in, uh, unless I'm cutting video gotcha, as well. Gotcha. Yeah, so, um, I, but all the effects that I'm doing with you, I will take with it, yeah? So the other thing too is that we added this little soft piece on here and we want it inside our rack. It is, I'm gonna call this, um, this is now Kyle, T-I-T-S. And the, the microphone is the SM5801. All right, so we have those two set and it's sounding pretty good. Let's just go ahead and listen briefly. At this juncture in time and space, you can consider yourself tapped into the source. Okay. A lot of the, um, I guess like the rules of bluegrass, I, I definitely learned it uh, Father's Day for sure. Mm -hmm. How would you attribute your affinity for tapping into such advanced musical capacity at an early age? Do you feel like it's something that's just innate or something tied to your intellectual chemistry or more so the way you connect with it emotionally? I don't know. I, I, I think it's a lot more emotional. Um, you know, I, I think of music as a language, just, just like any other speaking language is. And so I'm not saving I was a new so one young when I was started soft. learning and, and I put a lot and a lot of time into it that it. So I put a O2 now of your um, preset rack. And then um, the, the, the last two I'll do here is I'll just put on my basic one again and do their, do this, and then we could bounce it if we're down. Yeah. Um, one thing that I'll, what you might want to do is listen back to and um, make some notes, and I'd be happy to just do this quickly for you. Um, it's very quick for me. It's just... Make a note of every time you think there's like a uh, going on with you or him that doesn't make sense. Sometimes it is kind of live, so you want some of those, but you can take those out. And even there's pauses, maybe you can cut down pauses. Um, yeah, so that's that's a way to kind of shorten it up and just have a really concise podcast where maybe your 33 minutes turns into like 30 minutes. You, you cut out about three minutes of kind of like dead space. Okay. So um, that would take some tedious time right now. And I think that you listening and getting, just making the, the, the timestamp notes, then I, I could edit it for you um, pretty quick and easy and then just send a new one to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and vocals. And I might as well just do the same vocal one over here for the guitar and just change the EQ to match the guitar. Now this is where it's gonna be exciting because we can actually do some of our um, effects that I've spent a lot of time with Oz Fritz creating this send and receive chain here. 
of reverbs. I'm gonna start off with just the basics though of the rack for the vocals. I only want one of these on. It looks like I copied two over there at some point. Okay, here we go. Whatever you do, and it makes you feel lonely. When you're not alone, you got the blues. He ain't coming home. Probably the first one to go in and it's delete true. that um, abortive section of that song absolutely right. yes i can do that for sure like the big ones i'll do yeah that second pretty song pretty obvious went for 30 seconds before yep i see it actually right here i'll make a marker there it is whatever you do it makes you feel lonely when you're not alone It's hurt your ego. You must feel regret. And you lost the one thing, the best of you, man. If only you knew that when he was around, whatever you do, he makes you feel lonely when you're not alone. Yeah. Cool. So I think this is the one he stopped on. So he chose to go there. Let you alone. Oh my gosh. Right. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, bringing my grid a little tighter so that I can then take this time. I'm just taking any track, selecting that area, and then Command Shift Delete. And this is actually what I'd be doing to any dead time as well. Just taking it out. There's a crossfade that naturally happens there. Too. Just a little. You took him for granted, but he didn't care. Some nights you leave him when you needed you there. So he chose to go to you, but you didn't know. Shadows just outside of you. you can't seem to shake him. Whatever you do, he makes you feel lonely. When you're not alone, you got the blues, he ain't coming home. It's hurt your ego. Put an EQ on. You must feel are all presets that took a lot of time to do with Oz and it's like amazing EQs a short medium and long and the long one is panned already so it's a lot of customizations that like easily work for songs whatever you do
Yeah, yeah, totally. Actually, um, I'm bringing out that low end body of that guitar. The guitar is really nice too. I, I was eyeing his guitar. I was like, dang, that's a good one. Yeah, and it's amazing how a DI can pick up. It sounds like it's it's almost mic'd. You know, it's something good. All right. Side of you. Yeah, I left it all behind. Something I'll never find. Nice. And at the very end, I have an easy fade out, and that's it right there. Cool. I'll, I'll put a little timestamp there. There also was a, like 30 seconds of tuning into that last song. So we'll wanna last song, you said? Yeah. Okay, let's see where that is. Right there. Watch that. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's just see that. Make sure the intro is what we want to. <clears throat> the, the lick on that last song is, is such a basic progression, but it really pulls you in. Totally, totally. It's great playing, great writing. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that's that time where I just want him to say thank you and then go right into the song. There it is. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, thank you. I think I want a little more volume on the guitar. I'm gonna go ahead and put the limiter up. a dB higher. Working on the phasing of this. Yeah, I personally kind of like how that's sounding. There's some separation in the phasing. This blank page around my thoughts, but I don't know what to say. Sometimes I wish these words would appear. road it's never gonna pave itself and these words ain't gonna put food there's something about that big big one on the side that i like so i think i'm gonna do a little more of that so Presence to be known. I'm a traveler taking on the world. Won't prove nothing till I get out there and be heard. And I can't get these words to appear the way I want them to. Yeah, if I can't get these words to appear the way I um, the inter an interlude. There, where I, um, I, in, I introduce this performance section. Okay, and let's let's make sure you don't say it. Right? I thank you. <laughs> and now um, Kyle's going to play a couple songs okay. from for us from 
left it all behind, which cool. So you do say it, but let's let's actually open that up because I'm gonna bounce this, and this will be the end of this section of our time together. Um, our start is gonna be from the very beginning. Just wanna make sure that starts out good and ends. And I'll never find I'll be never coming back. So good. What did you realize about the saxophone versus the performance? Yeah. Instead of just being from the album. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead and go command one or command two. That's actually how you take the grid on smaller or larger. And that's something that in Hindenburg, I wanna make sure we can do because I saw it just only in large mode. They must have it for editing purposes, but really key feature for being able to select the exact spot you want. Mm -hmm. Command shift R, I'm gonna just bounce an MP3 for now um, because it's a, it's a smaller file. Often for podcasts, it's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, because it's such a big, long file otherwise. Um, and I'll export it, and I'm gonna make sure that I save it to the exact same folder, active folder, tapped into the source, and this would be named um, Tyler Mix 01. And I'll save it. And because your drive is still in here, I'll just pop it into your drive, mm -hmm. and then you'll have that. Cool pretty quick yeah it's getting e uh, quicker and quicker with doing podcasts um, especially if we have these presets and the same microphones and same people going on you just drag and drop what you did before so next time we do this based on the sm7b that we have for you i think it's a great mic for your voice it just has more warmth it's actually what like most podcasters use out there and then also like michael jackson made it famous because he sing an album with it as well. Um, cool. So that is going to conclude this portion of the video, and I'll be able to have that for you to watch and people to watch for a little podcasting. Hope that helps.